Ryan. What is going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I found my razor, so the facial hair went away, at least a little bit. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. We have the E-mini, actually kind of sideways right now from the open, but, uh, excuse me, you're trading uh, just off about 0.03% right now. Uh, of course, trading at 5,364 off of 5,373 uh, from the open today. We'll see if we can make those all-time highs by the end of the day. Uh, the Russell futures off about 0.7%, and Q's roughly flat as well. And the Dow futures actually going to the upside as well. Uh, gold trading at 2,392. I'm just looking at this on the daily, but I like the longer terms to see what's happening. And so, you know, I would really recommend I, I, you know, gold and silver, and the metals, I mean, look at silver today, right? We're up 4.5%. Uh, copper not doing as stellar, uh, of course, but I've, I've made arguments in the past for a longer term kind of lookout on copper, but it's inarguable that silver is doing really well. Uh, gold is coming right back up, probably going to go back to the all-time highs to see uh, what it can do. Uh, of course, when you make those all-time highs, you get that kind of pullback, but we've been seeing uh, some kind of decreasing volume. Uh, especially compared to that leg down. So it remains to be seen if we can test uh, that high with some volume and we can keep going in gold. Of course, as I was saying, silver up about 4.5%. Shout out to Mike in the den. Keep those silver memes coming. We're trading at 31.42 right now in that contract and uh, copper futures at 467. Uh, now, our buddy Crude uh, popped up quite substantially today, uh, up about 2%, which is nice. We we're trading very low down to the 72 level, and the question has always been, what is going on? You know, we're approaching summer, right? There's this concept that it's going to be the hottest summer ever, and we're going to need more energy to cool everything. Of course, now we have a bunch of stuff going on um, with, with these new servers that we have. Uh, Bitcoin mining is at an all-time high, which requires more energy. Uh, in fact, Riot, which is a massive Bitcoin miner, um, just got shorted. We can talk a little bit about that. Um, but one of the major arguments from the group shorting it is that we're going into summer and energy costs are going to be so high. Right now, we're not seeing that really reflected, right? We're still at 75.62, um, but we'll see what it does uh, coming out. Of course, if you like trading crude or really just energy in it, I'm going to take a look over here at Gush. This is uh, our friends over at Direction. This is the two times leverage bull ETF. Um, very interesting. We want to get some good uh, exposure uh, to oil, of course, that is leveraged, so keep that in mind. And then drip as well is the bearish version of that. Take a look, off about 1% right now. Okay, Tesla, up one, oh, wow, up 1.87%, not doing too much, about 178.29. Of course, there's a lot of conversation going on uh, around, you know, one, Tesla taking, uh, Musk taking uh, the chips that were destined for Tesla and sending it uh, to his XAI and just uh, what was formerly known as Twitter's company. Uh, he's going to come up with something, I promise, that will essentially say, yeah, I know he's off, you know, he's sending these chips uh, to these companies, but it's going to help Tesla in the long term. Uh, this remains to be seen what goes on there. Uh, Steel Dynamics actually broke down uh, below its its trading range, which is between that 140 and 130, really the 136, 130. Uh, again, did this on kind of low volume. So it remains to be seen what happens with Steel Dynamics if we actually are turning into something a bit bullish with them. Uh, obviously, we had a downwards consolidation in Steel Dynamics, but uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. And then dollar, this is the big news. Uh, right back down at the 104.10 level. I think we briefly breached 104, uh, but it seems to want to stay kind of low. All right. What is some interesting stuff going on? One of the big things I want to talk about is TSMC. If I can pull it up. This is kind of just a short comment on it. Um, oh, it's TSM, right? Yeah. There we go. So we're off about 0.52% uh, right now. However, it's pondering boosting the AI chip production prices for NVIDIA. So, so they have had sustained demand uh, for their goods. It's been very nice. Their, their last um, report out in April was just stellar. Um, I, think, I think their product was up like 60% just getting it out, right, which is pretty nuts. And uh, they're thinking about raising the price, which would be phenomenal because that's not going to decrease demand. 
uh, for them. NVIDIA is still going to be buying their stuff. Uh, and Huang literally said uh, that TSMC's wafer price is too low, which is pretty nuts for him uh, to add. And NVIDIA, wow, accounts for 10% of TSMC's uh, 2024 revenue at least. Hiked prices by 10% in 2022, another 5% in 23. And honestly, they probably could hike it even more. Trading at 162 uh, right now for TSM. I mean, look at this, even beginning of the year, trading just at 100. If they do hike the prices, it's not going to, I, I don't believe it's going to cut into the demand at all. Um, and it'll be good for them. So that's just something to kind of think about. Of course, just do your due diligence on that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about CrowdStrike. Uh, because they killed it and are really bringing up a lot of the cybersecurity ETFs. I think Basil was talking about that earlier as well, and that was just a, a fantastic uh, overview. Uh, as always, look at this huge, huge volume uh, moving up, a big gap up right now, trading at 343 for CrowdStrike. Let's take a look. Shares of cybersecurity company CrowdStrike soared on Wednesday after reporting strong earnings results. Uh, CrowdStrike gained nearly 10% midday, this was yesterday, after it said its revenue in the first quarter grew by 33% to $921 million, ahead of $905 million consensus analyst estimates. Adjusted earnings per share came in at $0.93 cents versus $90. Uh, has an $81 billion market cap, a little bit higher right now. It's the second largest pure play cybersecurity company behind only Palo Alto Networks. It destroyed Palo Alto. I think we're going to start seeing money come in to cybersecurity again. Of course, large companies, I say this all the time, but they had reduced their investing on it, um, which is a bad idea. And uh, we can see outflows starting to come up again, uh, or at least for spending on cybersecurity, um, which is really solid uh, for that industry as a whole. And, you know, I mean, let's see, we look at Cisco. They recently bought Splunk, which was massive. Cisco is interesting because they're, they're so large right now you know, you have this concept of, of giants, right? And, and, and these large companies cannot always increase uh, in such a substantial way that it warrants the stock price going up, right? They're not going to grow super, um, they're not going to grow as much as smaller companies. But adding something like Splunk, which is massive uh, in IT, uh, and if they can integrate that very well, I think we could continue to see a really good case for Cisco growth as well. So anyways, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.